This week in H10 EMA, we've been focusing on transformers. The principle of a transformer is that you have a core made of some ferromagnetic material, which you then wrap coils of wire around. Having a core with a single wire around it is the basis for an inductor. We can use two coils of wire to create the basis of a transformer. In a transformer, both sides of the circuit are not electrically touching. They're not electrically connected. This means that we can have wireless charging and we can also use this system in devices where we want to make sure that, for example, in a medical setting, a patient is not electrically connected to a machine. In a transformer, the ferromagnetic core has a magnetic flux established by coil one. This is then coupled to coil two, where we can draw off a current and a voltage. This system means that we can use transformers to reduce a mains voltage to something smaller. This is called a step down transformer. And we can also go the other way where we take a low voltage and increase it in a step up transformer. In English, the word transformer is used to mean the power supply. So this can be your charging block for a laptop or any electrical appliance, which has a connection from the mains to then a lower voltage. However, Inside this block is the electrical component we refer to as a transformer. This distinction is quite important. In the rest of these videos, we're going to be talking about transformer equations and how we can calculate some useful parameters. There's one more lecture left for EMA before the Christmas break and then before your January exam. In this video, we're going to investigate magnetic circuits in a little bit more detail. So this is using a download called Magnetic Circuits, and this is a Wolfram interactive demo. So you can download it yourself and have a go at these. What we've got here is this grey rectangle around the outside is just the simulation area, so you don't need to worry about that too much. We've got, interestingly, a mean path length. So that's going to be the length of the flux, which we can see is this red line around the uh, core. We've also got the reluctance of the core written here. Then we've also got the total flux. What we can do along the side is we can change several of the parameters in the circuit and we can see what happens. So we've got number of turns. The gap, what we're going to do is we're just going to reduce that to, uh, we want to reduce that to as low as we can because we're more interested in a core which doesn't have an air gap, which is what the situation is here because we've not looked at that situation. We can increase the number of turns and you can see it happening there. And we can see that as we increase the number of turns, Turns, we can see the total flux will also change. If we increase the amps, that's the number of amps that are going through the circuit, we can see that we've then got a change in flux. If we change the air gap, we can see that we actually do change the reluctance, we change the path length. So you can see that gap getting bigger, that's the red block there. If we wanted to invent an actuator, this is what we would use. So the lock that will pop up on a car door uses one of these where the little bit that pops up would be put between here, but we don't need to worry about that for now. So we'll reduce that right down. If we change the dimensions of this, we'll change the dimensions of the transformer core. So we can see that as we do that, we change the reluctance and we also change the flux. We also actually change the path length because it makes it uh, shorter. We can also change the height. So this will change the shape of that um, core and we can also change the length by making it wider. So we can have a bit of a play around with these parameters and see what it does to our circuit. You can spin this around and have a look, but that's just quite a nice way of getting familiar with the different parameters in a magnetic circuit and how we can control them ourselves. What I want to show you here is the inside of a power adapter so you can see the transformer. So this is an old um, one that I've taken off of my router. It's no longer needed. So there you can see the standard plug for scale. But what happens if we open it up, we can have a look inside and see what there is. So there's quite a few components that you'll already recognize. We've got some big capacitors that you can see the tops of here and over here. Those are electrolytic capacitors, so it matters which way around you connect them. Um, the other thing that you can hopefully see here is this blue part here, and this is the main step down transformer inside this power adapter. So what we've got here is we've got some coils of wire that are wrapped around, round and round and round inside, and this blue part is actually the top of the core that you can see, and it goes down in the centre, and that's the transformer core. And what the coils on this do 
is they take the voltage, which is 230, 240 volts AC that's coming in, and then steps it down to a much lower voltage, which will then be used to power the, or the router. And you can't really see it particularly well because it's all wrapped around to make sure it's safely packaged. But what you can see is that you've got all of the different coils and they go round and round and round. The um, big metal bit that you can see here is actually um, a heat sink because these things can get hot and that helps vent excess heat. On the other side, we've got a much smaller transformer that's actually in red that you can see the tops of glinting. This is another small transformer and you can actually see the red coils of wire there. In this video we're going to be investigating what happens to various transformer parameters in an interactive demonstration. This demonstration is called AC Transformers and you can find it on the Wolfram demonstration site. This uses transformer equations in a simulation just so you can see what happens. So you've got all of the information down here that's being used. We can see this is simplified or you can change it here as well. More about this, this is the AC effect, this bit with the load that we'll talk about next semester because you get what's called a phase shift. However, we're going to stick with the simplified version. The main thing here is you can see on the primary side in blue, we have a number of turns on a transformer core, which we can change with the simulation. So we can increase the number of turns and decrease them again. This is connected to a voltage supply called VP which gives rise to a current IP which goes into the coils. Don't worry about the fact that this is a sinusoid because the transformer equations are both the same for AC and for DC. This current flowing through the wire will then provide a magnetic field which will induce a magnetic flux. That magnetic flux will go around the core and pass through the secondary side. That magnetic flux will induce a voltage in the secondary side. That, what, that secondary side, when connected to something, means that the voltage will give rise to a current, which will then go through into the second side of our circuit, which in this case is just illustrated with an American-style resistance to illustrate there's more of a circuit there. So I encourage you, have a play with this and you'll see what happens. So I'm going to increase the number of turns on the primary. Will this make it a step up or a step down transformer? If we change it and now increase the number of turns on the secondary, what effect does that have on the voltage that you get on the secondary side and indeed the current on the secondary side? You can find all this stuff out by using the transformer equations. You can also play with experimenting with changing the uh, voltage on the primary side and the current on the secondary side and indeed the supply frequency. You can change the supply frequency and you'll see here it won't have much effect on the uh, diagram. That is only really important when you click on the load stuff, which again we will look at next semester. So hopefully that will make the transformer equations seem a bit more realistic. I encourage you to download this. The link is on Moodle and have a play and experiment for yourself.